today's video, I take the new Canon R6 Mark II on a riverside walk in search of macro photos just like these. Crucially, I will say that this is not a review of the Canon R6 Mark II. I'm just testing the camera out for my review on CNET, and I thought it would be worth actually putting it to some good macro use. Always pay close attention to fallen logs like this because they are such an amazing breeding ground for all kinds of macro opportunities. And that can be everything from interesting mosses, from leaves to insects, and of course, the mushrooms that I found here. But it can also just be about amazing textures. Because of course, as all these woods start to decay, all those lines start to become more pronounced. And as a result, they can be amazing things to point a camera at. But I have found these mushrooms, and what caught my eye about these in particular is the fact that they've grown sort of inside this hollow. So I'm gonna get down low and I brought a little plastic bag so I can kneel on it without getting my knees completely soaking wet. Now I do think that the position of these inside the stump looks really nice. Unfortunately, they have been a little bit eaten away by something. They're not the most pristine looking mushrooms, which is a little bit of a shame because it does slightly spoil the image. But that said, I still think it looks nice. So I'm shooting this on a 35mm macro lens because I do want to kind of capture more of the context of the mushrooms. I don't want to zoom in completely on them. Um, I want to be able to show exactly where they are within this amazing log. So my current scene is capturing this whole outer bit, almost making it look like a cave that the mushrooms are inside. And I think it's a decent looking shot, but I'm going to try it first with the natural light. So I'm going to go ISO 100, that's the lowest this camera allows, F9, and that's giving me a shutter speed of half a second, because it is quite dark under here this morning. And I'm just going to tap to focus on the mushrooms themselves, and then take that shot. And I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And I think one of the reasons is that they're just completely lost in that frame. They're very small inside this uh, tree stump hollow, and as a result, they don't really stand out as the actual subject. They're just a little bit lost. So I'm going to do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to just sort of lower my tripod a little bit. So simply by lowering my angle, it's giving me more of an upwards view, which is allowing them to stand out just that little bit more. But I'm trying to strike a balance here because I do want to capture all of this amazing wood around these mushrooms. I really want to put it in the context of where I found it inside this amazing hollow. But if I get too much of all of this stuff, then that's when we run the risk of the mushrooms kind of getting lost within the scene. So how then can I capture all of its environment but still make sure they stand out? And that is what I'm trying to figure out. So I've put the mushroom down here towards the bottom of the frame, and I do love the fact that we've got this amazing arc of this log curling round in the frame. And this is very much all giving that context that I want, showing that the mushrooms are inside the log. If I just zoomed in here, we'd just get, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the dirt um, on, uh, in the background. It wouldn't really be as compelling a shot. So I think the way I'm gonna try and highlight the mushroom and really make it stand out as a subject is by using my flash. I'm gonna use it off camera. I'm gonna fire it from over here to the left of the mushroom, firing in. Hopefully, that is going to make the light glance around the wood here, but really light up the mushroom, therefore helping it stand out amazingly well within the frame. At least that's the idea. And sometimes when I see shots like this, I can almost visualize how the lighting might work. And that's because I've spent a long time using off-camera flash in my macro photography. And I have found that the more you get used to working with light, the more it does allow you to visualize how a certain scene might look once you bring in a light. 
And as a result, it opens up a world of possibilities. Because for me, this scene really isn't working with ambient light. The mushroom is kind of falling into the gloom and it's not standing out, it isn't the subject. But I'm hoping that by bringing in that pop of light, we can transform this into something special. I'm using my Godox AD200. I put my wireless trigger on top of the camera. This is a trigger that's designed to work with Canon cameras, so it will work every bit as much with the R6 II as it does with my R5 or as it did with my 5D4. So I'm going to start this out at 128th power, which is the lowest power setting on this flash. But first of all, I'm going to up that shutter speed to 160th of a second, F9 because what I want to make sure I do first is take a completely black frame. So if I just take the shot now, I can see that there is no light at all captured by the camera. So that means that I know when I bring my light in that all the camera is seeing is this light. It's not being affected by any of the ambient light around it. So let's start off using autofocus before, but I'm actually going to switch that to manual focus just so I can make sure that it's absolutely catching on the mushroom, which it is. And my first shot was okay, but I think it needs to be a little bit brighter and I need to take it from a little bit further away. I'm also going to pop on my MagMod MagSphere. Now I love these because they just magnetically attach to your lights and this turns this very small hard light source into a slightly bigger one. It helps soften it, it helps spread it around the scene a little bit more. I think it's going to look a little bit nicer. But otherwise, exactly the same settings, F9, 160th of a second holding my light off to the left. So I'm playing around with this scene a little bit and actually what I'm gonna do is lower my shutter speed down to, I think about a, th a 15th of a second because I wanna try and bring in a bit more of the ambient light, but still using my flash just to give a pop of light, hopefully lighting up the mushrooms, but allowing that natural light to come in and light up the, the wood a little bit more. So. I'm at F9, uh, a fifth of a second actually, not a fifteenth. And put my flash off to the left, just as before. I really like how these look. I think it's got a more magical feel to it, seeing the ambient light, but also having that little pop of flash in there. But what I'm gonna do is back the camera off a little bit. And actually put the log within the context of its environment as well as the mushroom inside it. My hope is that by using that little pop of flash, it draws the attention to the mushroom, but that's going to be really tiny in the frame. And that might seem a little bit backwards thinking, but I'm hoping that showing all of that context is actually going to make this a really nice looking image. Focusing on the mushroom, and then my settings haven't changed. Pop that flash. I love finding little spaces like this when we've got all of these logs that have been uh, sliced down because they've been here for years now and they've really decayed. So many things have started to grow. So if you are out looking for macro photographs and you see these kinds of old tree stumps and logs, spend some time, actually slow down, put your bag down maybe and really study them, get up close because there are so many opportunities for photos here. I mean, later in the year, this area is going to be absolutely covered with snowdrops and bluebells and wild garlic and probably daffodils. Right now, we're in late January and everything is still very much <laughs> dead. But it doesn't mean there's nothing to photograph. Quite the contrary, in fact, because all of that decay actually lends itself really nicely to macro photographs. And in fact, I've seen all of these fungi growing in amongst this lovely vibrant green moss. So I'm going to get a shot here. I'm going to handhold this F4 ISO. It's quite dark. I'm going to bump my ISO up to 640, but it's a full frame camera. It can definitely take the, those slightly higher ISO levels without it being a problem. Um, because crucially, I need a shutter speed of, you know, I'm handholding this. It is a stabilized camera, which is really, really helpful. Um, but even so, when I'm getting very, very close up, any movement is gonna be a lot more noticeable. So I'm at a hundredth of a second. The autofocus is not enjoying being this close up. So I am going to manually focus quite close. 
I do really like how these look. It's that lovely colour contrast between the browns of the plates of the fungus with that really vibrant, vivid emerald green of the moss. Top down on this lovely green ivy leaf in amongst all these browns. That's quite nice. And you know, hand holding for shots like this is it's absolutely fine. Lone couple of leaves by themselves. Lovely stuff. So like these, these ivy leaves growing up the tree. So I'm going in closer on this one leaf. With the stem just curving its way up that tree trunk, which I quite like. It's not the most incredible of macro photos, but it's a nice shot from the day. Sometimes that's all you need. Oh, I see. It's a whale. Whale I never. But it's a whale that's covered in all kinds of things, including these nice fungus plates that are sort of fringed with white. I'm going to put that in a shot with this lovely spiral of its eye. Lovely green plants growing out through the uh, mortar in these ancient walls. I say ancient, I think they're a couple of hundred years, but you know, it's a ruin. So it like almost qualifies as ancient, but again, I'm hand holding, hundredth of a second, Autofocus. I definitely think the uh, stabilization has helped there because my hand was a little shaky, but I could see that the frame was uh, absolutely rock solid. So hopefully, got a nice sharp shot. Found some lovely orange mushrooms growing on this bit of tree. We've clearly been here a while because they're a little bit wilted now, which is a shame means we're not super photogenic, but I definitely think it's worth trying to get something here. So the shot I've got framed up using the 35mm um, is wide enough that it's allowing me to capture more of this log in the foreground that kind of curves round. And then we've got this protruding bit here on which we've got our mushrooms. So I really like the composition and it is one that I think I can only really get using a wider angle macro lens like the 35. But the shot is not perfect. At f9 and an eighth of a second, if I, maybe a sixth, if I just take this shot now, it's perfectly nice, but we've got a lot of clutter in the background, a lot of mess that means that these mushrooms just don't stand out in the way that I want them to. Now there's two ways I could go about changing that. I could drop my aperture right down to f1.8 bring my shutter speed back up as a result to an 80th of a second and take the same shot. And I do really like that. It's perfectly nice. The only exception is that we've got this long stick kind of going through the scene here. Um, someone's literally sort of dumped a branch behind, so I am just gonna move that. But I'm gonna try two things. First of all, I'm going to do a focus stack enable focus bracketing. I don't need a hundred shots. I'm actually going to adjust this and do 33. Starting from here. And I'll be honest, I do really like that. I love that shallow depth of field, but we've still got this bit in focus and we've got the mushrooms themselves all nicely in focus. I think it looks great. Only thing I'm going to try now is taking basically the same shot without focus stacking, but lighting it using my flash. Maybe I could drop my exposure a little bit. So again, we've brought a little bit more of that ambient light in. So we've still got some information in the background, but also we've really picked out the mushrooms on top. But I'm going to take that shot and maybe blend it with this one from above. A 
Hopefully that shot's gonna work really well because it's bringing in both elements, the ambient light, but mixing in just a pop of that flash to actually help the mushrooms stand out. But I've essentially used two lights here, lighting it from below to get some of the detail underneath the mushrooms, and then lighting it from above at an opposite angle to get that lighting on the top. But I only got the one light, which means I've only had to carry one light and buy one light. So if you've got your camera on tripod, it is very easy to blend those images together and create a shot that looks like you've got a multi-light setup, and actually, you've just got the one. But that brings me to an end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, please do hit that like button and of course, consider subscribing if you don't already, and I will see you next time.